So here's a shot of the Fire Reader and the UVI Dock HD2 right next to each other so you can get the comparison in size. Uh, you can see the UVI Dock is quite a bit smaller in width and the reason for that is because the transilluminator is actually um, put in the sideways instead of um, the, the standard way of rolling out. Each one does have the rollout transilluminator style. This one's just at a different angle so that you can actually save more space in the lab. So the main control operation buttons for the UVI dock are as follows. Uh, first we'll need to turn the system on, the power button being here. I'll take just a second for the internal computer to load the software up. Uh, in the meantime, I will go over the other three buttons you see on the front of the screen. Uh, the first one here is going to be to turn on and off the white light. It's Epi white light overhead. The second is a UV security switch to toggle on or off the ability for the UV light to either stay on or shut off when you open the door. And the UV light to just turn the transilluminator on and power it up. So uh, the software is now running. You can get a kind of view of, of the uh, format of what it's doing here. So it takes just about 30 seconds or so to get everything set up and once it does we'll have a couple of views, um, a couple of buttons to allow us to go into the live picture taking mode. So here we go, we're all set. So if I zoom in just so you can see a little bit of what these buttons are saying, there is a setup key if you want to change some of the default settings or some of the uh, configuration as far as what type of file is going to be saved, uh, where it's going to be saved, if you want this on the network, what the network address is, if there's a printer to be installed, all those things will be taken care of in the setup menu that is done by this button right here. Um, if you push the live button you go right into the picture mode you'll see a live image of what the camera is running in real time it does shut itself off within two minutes if you uh, were to walk away with the live concern on you have um, an exposure time increase and you have an auto exposure button which you may or may not want to use just depending on um, how good you feel the picture is in the live mode typically the live mode is all you need and you can do everything in this live ability if you do hit the next key well, you have to hit live first, sorry. So you hit live, and you'll get an image of whatever's in here right now. So currently, we don't have any light on or anything in there. So what I'm going to do is place a small um, speck of paper in here. It has various sizes from font 8 to font 22 of different plus, plus and equal signs with um, a highlighter over top to signify the fluorescent dye. And so the UV light will be able to pick up the fluorescence inside of here. So I'm going to open the dark room and take a look at what we have. So there's of course a transilluminator here. It is a rollout transilluminator. So we can pull this out to remove and put anything on the transilluminator that we need to do. So in this case I'll sit it right in the middle. Close the transilluminator. Close the door. And turn on the UV light. So looking at the screen, the UV light takes just a moment for the tubes to fire up. Uh, when we do, we can see a live image of what we have in here. And these are pluses or minuses with the fluorescent uh, highlighter over top of them. So back to our buttons, we have the live button, which of course we can, we've, we've pushed and we can have the live view of this. Judging by the, uh, the live image up top here, you can see that the live the live system is going. Because of the refresh rate, I'm sorry, that's not going to focus in very good. I think you can see it better this way. The um, freeze button, on the other hand, is actually how you take your picture. So once you hit live and you've got something inside of there, simply push freeze. You get a real time picture of what you see on the screen. From here, you can print this picture. You can save it. You can zoom in and take a closer look at different things. Um, or you can go back and simply push live again to take a different picture if you didn't like exactly what the result was. So now that we have it back on live, there are several camera options that you can see to adjust these things. So first, the first and top dial on the manual camera is the aperture. So you can open and close this aperture. All the way clockwise is closed, allowing no light to come in. As you curl to the, to the left, on, you'll see that a lot of light is coming in. The middle dial is for zoom. You can zoom in by turning clockwise or zoom out numerically going down by turning counterclockwise. The bottom is for the focus. You can focus larger, focus in by turning clockwise or focus out by turning counterclockwise. So we're going to take a look at the results on the screen when I do these types of options. So right now we want to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to zoom to get what I want to see, the approximate size of the screen. So now I'm going to adjust the aperture to allow no light to come in just to show the effects of this. And then back to allow enough light 
to see what we want to see. And if you get too much, of course, the image becomes saturated and you can't see anything but white. So we're going to get this to where the background is pretty much eliminated. And there's a, there's a good view of all of the uh, symbols that we're wanting to look at. Next is the focus. Of course, you can adjust the focus in and out. And I think right here is probably uh, our best bet. So once I have adjusted those three parameters on this picture, once again, I'll simply hit freeze. It quickly takes the real-time picture. You can print it through the print button if you have a printer attached to it. You can save it to either uh, the network or the internal memory here, or you can plug in a flash card or flash drive or a USB drive into this and take the uh, file somewhere else. So with the network compatibility, there's not really much of a need for that, but you're welcome to do it. I will, I will push the zoom key. Uh, it does zoom in to give you a larger picture of a portion of this. So if you're wanting to see more, you can actually push these down buttons. And you can see you can scroll up, down, left, and right to get different um, a larger view of a different portion of this if this, in case the screen wasn't quite big enough for you. However, with 8.4 inches, uh, usually the screen's quite big relative to any other ones out on the market and gives you um, a better option than having to have a computer sitting right there and then to interfere with software in between. So that's pretty much all of the, uh, the basic usabilities of the, of the item. So going into the setup menu, I'll show how that works out. You have the option here to open an image on the internal. You can delete an image that's on the internal memory. You can, stamp, you can set the toggle the options for stamping the date and time. You can add a grid or display the saturation on and off. You know, the advanced setup configuration allows you actually to, to set the date and time, to unlock or to add a printer, to select the image file format. And what that is is just basically what type of file the picture is going to be saved at. Default is a 16-bit TIFF file. You can change that pretty easily to an 8-bit TIFF file, a JPEG 8-bit file, or a BMP 8-bit. Um, we're going to leave it at 16-bit. The next one menu down, if you push the sideways key, it will go down to this other box. This is for the type of notation you're going to save the file as. It starts out as a uh, number of order format, so it will say image IMG, uh, say 001 for instance to start with. So you can define what, that's, what you want that to be here, and you can also change it to a date hour type format. So if you want to know the chronological day and the time the picture was taken, uh, it will be another way for you to actually annotate these if you so choose to do it that way. Okay, so that's basically it. Everything's all set up. Uh, when you're done, you simply turn the UV light off or the white light, whatever you had on there, and uh, simply turn the power button off, powers down, and you're set until the next time around. Um, with the filters, you have a three position filter slide up here. So simply by rotating the, the knob, you change to a second filter or to a third. And so simply we'll leave it on one because there's only one filter in the machine. It's for Athedium Bromide. And in this case, uh, I'll show you how to change the filters as well. You just basically loosen the dial, you'll slide the camera, and there you see the filter. So in order to change it, you'd simply rotate it one position, put a new filter in, and do the same thing to add other filters together. So once you're done, simply put it back to where you're at, slide the camera back, and tighten down the knob. So here's once again the full view of the UVI dock to get an idea of what this is going to look like uh, relative to the fire reader. And the next part of the, part of the video I'll actually turn it around to show you what's on the back of this where the USB ports are and what sort of connections you have there. As you can see from the back view of the UVI dock, you have uh, a couple of items. You have the main toggle on and off switch. You have the main power supply or the cord will plug in. Uh, there is a USB cord dangling here that comes from the camera. The USB cord will plug into one of the three USB slots on the back here. The other two can be used for a thermal imaging printer, um, any sort of USB print connectivity you want to use. Um, a mouse, if you want to have a mouse in here, to um, instead of pushing the buttons you can scroll the mouse. And also the Ethernet cord for network uh, compatibility. There are also a couple fans on the back to keep things ventilated. Uh, on the side of the instrument is the fourth and final USB port. So on this USB, this is where typically you would put your flash memory or your USB stick in to retrieve the files and then go to access them at another location.